Hello people! I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation traditional English witch and I live in the southwest of England in the beautiful Devon countryside, literally in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of a wood actually, it's very pretty. Today's video is a collaborative video with the very wonderful Bex from The Witch's Cookery. I'll let Bex introduce herself. Hi lovelies and welcome in my kitchen. I am Bex, the witch of The Witch's Cookery. I have been a practicing green kitchen and cottage witch for 17 years and love to share my knowledge and passion for magical food, mother nature's beauty and a cozy home with my online friends. We thought our viewers might be interested in seeing how two different witches create spells with the same three ingredients. I'll put the link to Bex's video down in the description below so once you've had a look at what I've been up to then do head over there and check out what she's doing. So we decided that the three ingredients should be something that you can get everywhere in the world. And these are cloves, cinnamon and nutmeg. You've probably got them in your kitchen cupboard at the moment. Go and have a look. I'm sure they're there. So having looked at these three ingredients and studied their properties a bit, it became very quickly clear to me that they would be a wonderful success or luck spell. And one of the easiest ways to put a success and luck spell together is in a compelling oil, especially with spices, because they lend themselves to that particular format. So this video is about how to make a compelling oil for success and luck. So the first spice we're going to look at is cinnamon. Now I'm sure that you're aware that cinnamon comes in these rather beautiful cigars, and they're the roll dried bark of the cinnamon tree. And as a hugely illustrious career cinnamon, it was used in rituals for religion for many thousands of years. They burn it because it smells quite divine. For example, Moses from the Bible was asked to anoint the tabernacle, which was the dwelling place of God on this earth, with cinnamon infused oil. The plague doctors used to push cinnamon sticks into those really rather strange masks that they used to wear to stop and prevent the smell and the bad miasma of the plague affecting them. And this is actually quite a sensible thing to do because um, it's got an antiseptic property and antibiotic and studies have been done on its antibiotic properties. But what I was of course really interested in is its magical properties. Now cinnamon is a booster, it's a real stimulant drug, so it will increase and intensify the power of any spell that you put it into. It also attracts success, luck and abundance, which means that if you use it in a success, luck and abundance spell, then it's going to really intensify and hone down that spell to make it work. The second spice that we chose was the rather beautiful nutmeg, and I've got the inside of nutmeg here, you've got this oh, stunning little seed. This is a spice that has been used in both savoury and sweet dishes throughout history and has a very great heartening and warming effect. Rather interesting that they did consider nutmeg in the ancient times as some sort of Viagra of the spice world. Nutmeg is now considered to be a success and money spice and this is really important in a success and luck spell to have the abundant attraction of money. It, does, it will attract all sorts of other things, but you know, there is a money attraction within this spice, which we are going to use. One of its other traits is it ensures completion of a task, so that you can use it to ensure that when you finish your spell, that it will work and you will get that success and luck. And finally, the last spice was the clove. I don't know if you can see it here. It's a beautiful spice. It's one of my favourites, only because I adore bread sauce. I happen to think that roast chicken is just a vessel to put bread sauce on. The French called cloves le clou because they look like a nail, which I think was rather sweet really, isn't it? Nutmeg was the Viagra of its day. Cloves were considered the caviar of their day. If you had cloves, you were really quite smart and rich and wealthy. Especially in the Tudor times, they loved a bit of clove. You know, they put it with a ham and those wonderful oranges stuck with cloves to keep out the plague. Funnily enough, they have a hugely antiseptic quality. Cloves are three times as strong, antiseptically speaking, as carbolic acid, which is the stuff that Joseph Lister used to revolutionise surgery in the early 20th century. Cloves magically were used by traditional witches to clear negative energy and ensure that only good things came your way. And that's really important in a success spell because you need to get rid of any negative hold your back stuff in order to attract success and luck. I haven't seen the witch's cookery video yet, but I really hope she does something with mainly cloves. 
So it's quite a simple spell to start with. I'm possibly only going to use half a cinnamon stick because I don't think I need much more. I'm going to crumble the cinnamon stick as small as I can into a pestle and mortar. Now for those of you who don't know, the mortar is the pot and the pestle is the bangy thing. I'm going to add the cloves and then I'm going to take my nutmeg. Now nutmeg is very very tough so you can't really pestle and mortar it so I'm going to grate it first of all in order to get it into a consistency that we can then bash together with the other two spices. Now nutmeg is, you can see it's a beautiful spice and it takes a while. So grind up your spices in the pestle and mortar until they've come a fine powder. This will take about probably 10 minutes. Well, that's how long it took me. And then I want you to take some olive oil. The olive oil I'm using is, is actually a rather first press cold olive oil. And you can pour that on top of your spices. You don't have to use olive oil. In fact, you can use any oil that you feel most attracted to. So if you like coconut oil or almond oil, do use that. But take your wand and mine, as you can see here, is a piece of goldstone and using it to stir the energy, combine all the three spices into the oil and ask them to turn themselves into a compelling oil. It is your intent that makes the spell, it's your energy going into it. Pour it into a small bottle and shake it around, making sure that all the oil and the spices are amalgamated. Now this bottle needs to be kept for three days for the oils and the spices to seep together and for the intensity of the spell to work. Every now and then, give it a shake. All the oil is perfectly saturated with the three spices. Et voila, you now have very good, compelling oil. So pay attention class, safety information. Only use the compelling oil in a spell for concepts, i.e. I want uh, great success in business or I want great love. Use it on objects, I would like a new car. Use it for spell for that, I want more cash. Do not use it on a named person. If you force someone to do something against their will, that magically creates a reaction. That action creates a reaction. And this can backfire badly back on you. This is why they say you reap what you sow sevenfold. So for every action that you do, you should receive sevenfold back, good or bad. That is my warning, so don't do that. Lecture over. But I did need to tell you that, it is important. So how would you use your compelling oil? Well, you use it to anoint things. So if you wanted to do a spell and you had a candle involved in that spell, you might dress your candle with the oil. You might use it on your altar. So if you have a statue of your god or goddess on your altar, you might use it to anoint the statue because that's asking for success and luck from the god or goddess. You can use it on yourself, so you can anoint yourself with it. Put it on your hands when you go out and whatever you touch will bring you success and luck. If I was at school, if I was doing exams, I might put it on the folder where I kept all my schoolwork and that would bring me success and luck within that subject. You still do have to do the work, you, know, you can't just have success and luck without the input. So you'd still have to revise and stuff, but but what it will probably do is it will make the exam paper and your revision match perfectly. Because you know how you miss out bits? Or oh, you think, oh, I won't revise that, I'll revise that. So it'll bring up that rather than the bit that you forget failed to do. So this was the compelling oil that I made from the three ingredients, cinnamon, nutmeg, and I can't even remember what the third one, oh, cloves. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. And now I'm gonna go over and have a look at Bex's video on the witch's cookery and see what she did. I know she's done a recipe, I'm gonna go and try it. I am the world's greatest cook, so it will be magnificent. So I really hope you enjoyed this video of what a witch does with three basic ingredients. Um, do try it out. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions and I'll try and help. And in the meantime, give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video.